my Lord and my God, I firmly believe that you are here, that you see me, that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I ask your pardon for my sins and the grace to make this time of prayer fruitful. My Immaculate Mother, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me. Have you ever showed up when people are in the middle of a conversation? You try to follow what they are saying, but because you do not know the context, you feel kind of lost. At some point, when it's convenient, you say, what are you talking about? It helps to know the context of things to understand what people are saying or to understand a story that is being told. The Gospels that we hear each day at Mass are no exceptions. Sometimes it is helpful to know the context, to understand what is being narrated by the evangelists and to understand what you, Holy Spirit, are trying to tell us. In today's Gospel, we see a discussion taking place between Jesus and some Pharisees and scribes. The discussion centers around fasting. John's disciples frequently fast and pray, but your disciples eat and drink. To which you, Jesus, reply by saying that when the bridegroom is present, it is not possible to fast. The context is the great banquet put on by Levi, better known by the name of Matthew. The reason, be, the reason for the banquet is to celebrate. Matthew has converted. He has been chosen by Jesus to follow him. Let us briefly pause on the call of Matthew to better understand what happens after. That there is a church in Rome by the name of Saint Luigi dei Francesi, Saint Louis of the French, not far from Piazza Navona. As you enter the church to the left, at the very end of the nave, there is a small chapel with three paintings by Caravaggio. Caravaggio was a great artist who lived and worked in Rome in the 1600s. These three paintings of his tell the story of the call of Matthew, the writing of his gospel, and his martyrdom, the three of them together in one chapel. The painting that tells the story of Matthew's call is outstanding. If you cannot picture it in your head, or if you have not seen it, I invite you to pause the meditation and Google it. Simply type Call of Matthew by Caravaggio. It can help you as we continue our conversation with Jesus. Looking at the painting, we see that the context is the world. Everything is earthly, even the way everyone is portrayed. The only hint of the spiritual is the light coming from an unknown source that flows from Jesus to Matthew. It is as if the painting is reminding us that it is in the world, in what is earthly, in what is ordinary, that we find Jesus. The right arm of our Lord, which reaches out to point at Matthew, is a replica of the way God reaches out to Adam in Michelangelo's creation of Adam, and which is now in the Sistine Chapel in the Vatican. Again, if you have not seen this painting, pause the audio and Google Michelangelo's creation of Adam. You will notice that the hand of our Lord in Caravaggio's painting is not the hand Michelangelo painted for God the Father, but the hand of Adam. The idea behind this is the fact that Jesus is the second Adam, whereas sin entered the world through the disobedience of the first Adam, Salvation has come through the obedience of the second Adam. Now, if you look at the painting, you see that Peter is mimicking Jesus by also pointing at Matthew. His pointing, however, is a bit less assertive than the pointing of Jesus. He, he is learning. He also stands between Jesus and Matthew. In fact, you can see that the body of our Lord is covered by the body of Peter, with the exception of his head and his right arm. This small detail is insightful, as it reminds us how our Lord wield the mediation of the Church. Our love for the Church and our union with the Pope 
and our bishops is based on this reality. The church, with its hierarchical structure, has been wielded by Jesus. Finally, there is Matthew sitting on the table, looking at Jesus and Peter. One hand, pointing at himself in disbelief, as if saying, Are you serious? Are you sure that you have the right guy? His other hand is holding some coins. Matthew is a publican, a tax collector. You see, publicans were Jews who were charged by the Romans to collect taxes. Since they worked for the occupation, for the nation that was occupying Israel, they were considered traitors. We can imagine they were very rich, especially if there was corruption when they collected taxes. Our Lord was not afraid of mingling with these people, as he himself said right after calling Matthew, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. I have come to call not the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Going back to the painting, we see that those who surround Matthew are four individuals. The two on his right do not notice what is happening, whereas the two on his left gaze in wonderment at Jesus and Peter. This scene repeats itself again and again. Jesus is passing by me each day in the person that I find difficult to deal with or in the frustrations and small annoyances of each day. Do I notice what is happening? Do I notice that Jesus is passing by? Or is my head down like those who are on the right of Matthew, unable to perceive the divine in the ordinary, in the world? The entire painting tells the story of Jesus who one day was passing by the booth of Matthew and said, follow me. As the Gospels tell us, Matthew immediately got up and followed him. The gaze of Jesus, his arm outstretched pointing at him, the tone of his voice were enough to win Matthew over. Makes a lot of sense now why Matthew, immediately after, puts a great feast to celebrate. His house is filled with publicans, with tax collectors. There was good food and drink, and also, I am sure, a lot of noise. This is what triggers the discussion about fasting that we find in today's Gospel. John's disciples frequently fast and pray, but your disciples eat and drink. Jesus, how could Matthew and his friends fast? He had just converted, he had just left his previous life, and he had been called by you. He had answered the call. His life had a new trajectory, with you at the very center. No, it was not possible to fast when you, Jesus, the groom, had entered his soul. Saint Peter writes that the same applies to us. As long as the bridegroom is with us, we must rejoice, for we can neither fast nor mourn. But when he has gone away through our sins, then a fast must be declared and mourning be enjoined. In fact, no one can take Jesus away from us unless we take ourselves away from him. Jesus, as we conclude this time of prayer, we ask you for the grace to be happy, to rejoice, for you too have chosen each one of us to be in the world, to be salt and light. May we, like Matthew, remain with you so that we can be salt and light where we are. I thank you, my God, for the good resolutions, affections, and inspirations that you have communicated to me in this meditation. I ask your help to put them into effect. My Immaculate Mother, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me.